Okay guys, so uh, I've cleaned up the chassis, um, got rid of the dust as much as I could, give it a bit of a wipe and a polish up, and I'll, I guess this is the cleanest chassis I've ever worked on. For some reason most of the ones I seem to work on are rusted and have all sorts of different problems. Uh, this one looks to be really neat and clean and tidy and everything else. Uh, incidentally the jolt, whenever this radio was jolted to the point where it crushed the back in and it uh, knocked the battery the uh, rechargeable battery at of its holder. It also knocked one end of the uh, AM antenna coil ferrite rod out of its holders, but doesn't appear to have damaged any of the wires. So here's hoping. Um, okay, so the first area I want to get stuck into uh, and really get a better understanding of is the uh, power supply. So in so this is the mains transformer right here. There's a couple of electrolytics. The um, bridge rectifiers are solid state. So we have silicon bridge rectifiers over here. Two of them. I'll show you the power supply circuit in the middle in a minute. Um, and there's a dual electrolytic uh, right here that will probably uh, do with replacing. Uh, given the size of the set, reasonably chunky output transformer. Um, so yeah, so quick look at the circuitry of the power supply. We have a bridge rectifier and a high voltage circuit, and the bridge rectifier for a low voltage circuit. And I don't know if you can see this clearly, but this battery right here is the rechargeable one. And these guys here look to be just in, in parallel. And so I'm assuming that these are the D cells over here. This is the rechargeable. It does seem kind of weird though, because I gotta do more research because um, this would seem like if you were charging this, you would also be uh, trying to charge these guys, which would not be good. Um, anyway, so uh, there we go, and at least this gives uh, the, the right the voltages. So that's the 90 volt V plus. It's also 114, and yeah, uh, one slight challenge is like the uh, Siemens I had. It only go the primary only goes to 220 volts, and my supply here is like 236. Um, so I don't know this. I don't want to be putting this transformer under any stress. So I think I'll just drive it off the variac until we're going and everything is okay. Uh, and then we might see about putting some sort of a little uh, resistor in series here since it only has to uh, according to the spec this thing only draws 9 watts in total um, so it shouldn't require two meter resistor hopefully to go in there uh, to uh, drop it from 236 to 220 okay that's it. So, uh, oh, the other thing, uh, just as I, as I'm figuring this set out as we go, there's a whole lot of wafer switches here. And in fact, there's two of them. So this is one right here, and there's another one below underneath. And there are two sockets here, which looks like a a plug goes in to activate, and then we'll push. And there's a little rocker inside the hole, so that when you insert a pin. It pushes it up uh, on both in both sockets here. So I'm assuming right now I gotta check it all out because the, the nomenclature is really weak on here. I, um, but I'm assuming that when you plug something in here, you go from AC to battery, uh, and if you unplug it, you go to uh, regular just AC. Of all of the photos of this chassis and this set I can find online, there is nothing plugged in here. So I assume that means nobody is driving it off batteries, and so at some point we're going to step up to that one. But <coughs> in the documentation, again, I'm not sure if you can see this in the cl in the clip, but here is this little plug device, which you can see here clearly plugged in, and then there's a cable running down here to somewhere. Um, as I say, none of the photographs I've seen show this at all. So, uh, interesting. Gotta go figure all that out. Uh, the other thing I've discovered from this drawing is 
this little strange connector that I showed you on the battery on the D-cell uh, it's original really don't know what that's for just as 1.5 plus 1.5 minus uh, that is strange um, still so it's part of the set I got a more research to do okay uh, I think that's it for now um, as I get stuck into this power supply uh, these electrolytics are all rated at around 125 to 175 volts so they're not the usual uh, high voltage ones as you'd expect with uh, a yeah, battery set so uh, what I'll do is I'll compare I'll see this is a um, I can't remember this is a 16 microfarad and a 32 this guy right here is just a 16 and I can't see what this is because I it's the uh, value is right where you can see it so we'll get to all that and then if the um, if the high voltage ones I have are too big um, we'll order up smaller ones and uh, go from there uh, this is reference footage uh, for later on in case I need to uh, check back on how things were connected up originally I just noticed on the uh, front of the cab here uh, what I thought was just a minor uh, tear or crack actually turns out to be a rather bad uh, break in the whole front of the cab here so I think I gotta get that stabilized and glued up as quickly as possible since uh, we don't want anything else to be uh, falling apart and make it harder later so I've ordered up some electrolytics and stuff so I can uh, replace them on the chassis so in the meantime I think I'll uh, devote a bit more attention to the cab so to get the, I'm gonna get the speaker out first and uh, I'm beginning to think this little bracket here is a previous repair because this bottom piece here now looks to be b broken um, and so to hold the front piece onto the base here I have a feeling this little bracket's not original because there are no others um, so yes I think you're going to have to strip this thing all down as much as you can as much as I can um, and start over okay I got all those nuts off and removed that bracket that was there um, there was a uh, Loctite on the uh, on each of the bolts so uh, it was a little bit touch and go um, whether or not they were going to shear or not so let's get the speaker out of there and uh, looks in pretty decent condition so hopefully that's one thing I'm not going to have to worry about so I'm going to put this guy safely out of the way because I'm not going to need him for a while it's a curious attachment with all these connectors bolted onto the back of the speaker here hey. okay all right <coughs> uh, this uh, board here has going to have to be replaced because um, holes in various places are all pulled through uh, and it is really flexible and bendy and stuff and so uh, there looks to be liquid damage here as well um, and some sort of, yeah this is all spongy here so okay so this one's gonna have to be remade which unfortunately means I gotta redo the speaker cloth which is one of my least favorite things to do I think I like speaker cloth even less than I like doing dial cards anyway also, you'll see tons of rust over here. Um, so I guess this guy was spewing some stuff out of here for a little while. And there's, I don't know if you can see it, but 
there's that really bad break from the inside. So it looks like there are four screws which hold the entire front of that cabinet onto the side. So we're going to get these off and then hopefully this whole front piece will come off. I can clean it all up and uh, glue that bottom piece across there. Uh, this is that flap that pulls down over the controls and the uh, dial cord uh, and, the, um, and the glass dial. I was wondering how I'd get it out, um, but it turns out they, there's a, you can see this little lip here which catches, but it's actually a, just a piece of spring steel on this side. So by sticking the um, exacto knife blade under it, Pressing it up, I was able to pull it past the stop, and so now the front case should come off fairly easily. And something else I just noticed, the, um, the impact down in here was so strong that not only did it break the uh, front plastic case here, it actually busted this uh, wooden spar here. There's a crack running all the way down here. It's taken away, it's moved away from its side piece here, so all this is going to have to be re glued as well. Well, just hope it didn't do any damage to the valves inside, because I have a feeling they might be tricky to get replaced. And having taken the four uh, screws out, which I thought would release the front of the cab, there was one last tiny little thing holding it, which was a piece of wire, which looks like it hooks into the front and then um, is bent at the back of the top spar here. Um, so uh, yeah, it took me a little while to find that. But now we're good. So with the four uh, bolts uh, taken out, this speaker board comes out. It's pretty straightforward. Um, but it's uh, totally damaged. Uh, certainly over on this side. So. Um, we're going to have to replace this with something a little bit more durable when we put it back. So uh, I'm going to try for probably something like a bit of high grade plywood if I can get a thin enough flare. Uh, which means I'm going to have to get speaker cloths. So I'll have to go looking around and see if I have something or can get something that looks close to this. Um, yeah, you got to be careful from here on because now this thing is just really flopping around here. So. Uh, and of course also this plastic bezel is just, um, you can see it just rests around where those bolts are so it's effectively held in place by, by the speaker board. So I can just lift all this out but of course that is also very fragile and so uh, yeah a little bit of delicate uh, handling and gluing I think. Uh, See if we can at least get these things to stop themselves from damaging themselves further. And so here's the bezel taken out. Uh, as you can see it's got uh, somewhat more damage to it than I thought because I thought that I knew this brake was down here. And I knew this guy was was not fixed to the top. But there's two more brakes in here that I didn't. So this piece has actually just fell out. And so I got one, two, three, four, five of these uprights I got to somehow, or four of these uprights I got to uh, put the replace, fabricate in some way. Still, I'll put this away for a little while while we look at uh, the big problem with this guy over here. Okay, I guess this front frame of the cab took a a little bit more time than I thought. So the main brake that I uh, fixed is down here in this corner. Uh, and that brake had been there for a long time because there was a lot of dirt in it. Um, so I cleaned it out as best I could. Um, and since it wasn't effectively a, an airtight joint, if you know what I mean, I put uh, epoxy in there rather than uh, trying to wick super glue in there. And um, so initially I thought that was the only um, problem here. But as I cleaned it and went around I found a hairline crack running up along here. But it's very, very... Uh, I don't even know if it goes all the way through because I couldn't even wick uh, terribly much uh, super glue in it. 
However, over in this corner here, I did find another fairly sizable crack running from the corner all the way out there. So I've glued that up as best I can. I think that went also there for quite a while, um, simply because the uh, the fabric is actually torn all the way through here, uh, just like it is <clears throat> for this one down here, which is where the major break was. Um, I had a quick look at trying to do the bright work here um, because as usual it's just usually the varnish that has the problem um, and so it won't be perfect but I think I can get it to come up somewhat better than it is right now um, so <clears throat> the other things I've noticed is this plastic piece um, uh, has actually shrunk um, because, I don't know if I can show you on the camera, but this edge here um, is definitely too far out. So this is too narrow for the gap. Um, and this was quite common in plastics made in the 50s. Um, and so for instance things like um, guitar pickup uh, pick guards uh, made of uh, similar types of materials in the 50s famous for <coughs> shrinking and causing all sorts of damage. Uh, this one doesn't appear to have done any more damage, at least I hope. Um, but it's got these dreadful spring steel clips um, that you can't really take them off. Um, you have a 50-50 chance that you'll break the spring clip or you'll break the stud that's holding it or you'll break whatever it's holding on. And so I figured it's not worth um, taking the risk with that since this could since generally this thing is fairly fragile uh, so I left it and I just gave it a good clean up um, so yeah I'd say this piece is stabilized at this point um, and so we'll get on and have a look at that uh, damage to the wooden frame um, and see if we can get that sorted out So, um, yeah, the damage to even this, or this part of the cab is quite bad as well because these, these little runners here, um, in whatever knock this thing got in the past, it's knocked quite a lot of them off. So, this one here, which is, which is on the front, um, from here down was lifted up. Uh, what I discovered is this um, material that the... Uh, that this part of the cab is made of is actually a type of paper or card material with a very thin veneer on it um, and of course when the knock when the shock came it uh, separated at the paper layer not at the uh, wood layer and so um, I thought there's no point in trying to just put an epoxy or something there so I'm just going to try it with um, contact adhesive and then when I get it back in place I'll run a um, another piece of wood glued across the entire length uh, to try and support it because for instance here it's, it's glued okay up along here so I actually cut it here so I could take it out so I'll put, uh, as I say, contact adhesive here uh, to try and hold it and then running along the back I'll glue another piece all the way up and hopefully that'll hold it. Um, as you can see, probably I've already cut the one out here on the top as well. This was actually lifted here and cracked all the way back almost right to the edge here. I just had to cut a tiny little piece to get that to come off. and. Uh, if it works on the bottom, I'll try it on this surface as well, in terms of a repair technique. And I think this one has uh, got some damage to it as well. So, um, fun and games. Interesting stuff. Yeah, definitely this thing has been dropped from a great height at some point. So here we go, here's the plan. So this piece here which goes from here until the saw cut there has now been affixed to this sort of card side 
uh, with contact adhesive. So that'll hold it in position, but um, it's not going to be too good structurally. And of course, this is one of the brackets here, which screws the front on. So that'll be trying to pull this forward, which is just going to take that right off of there. So the plan is to build a duplicate uh, piece, the same profile as this. Put it in the back here, like this. So that it glues onto the um, veneer down here and it glues all along the back of the surface here so that the tension on this pulling forward um, now would have to tear the glue from the piece at the back or lift it from the mahogany veneer or I think it's mahogany veneer um, on the back here so that should that's the theory we're going to try this on one but unfortunately three of these guys are undone um, so I'm going to have to make three of these guys so it's coach building time so there's the plan um, put that additional strut in there to secure the original one this one here is fine it doesn't seem to have been uh, damaged in any way the two at the other side are damaged so I've made another two struts to go uh, and support those guys so uh, yeah it's going to go and get this done while we get stuck in so we'll see in a while if the theory works in practice okay Yeah, that feels solid. I think we may have a a working solution here. Um, so uh, I think what I'll do is I'll take this bracket off of here, and then I'll see about forming uh, this to the to the main part. Now that it's nicely tightly glued. And uh, if that works, then we'll repeat twice more on the other end of this cab. Okay, there's the first uh, strut glued in and uh, and dressed, so it's the same profile as the uh, the one it's actually supporting. Um, it's a fair amount of. Uh, manual work to, uh, <laughs> to do it like this but I think that's the only real solution um, it definitely seems nice and solid in there now um, and part of the problem with this thing is such an irregular shape and you have this soft rubber going all around the edge you can't really clamp it in a vise very easily to uh, to work on it anyway I'm happy with that so uh, all I gotta do now is do it again twice uh, at least I don't have to do it twice on this side, but i got to do it twice on the other upright. So uh, I guess that's going to be next.